Okay, this mini lecture is just to kind of re-go through some of the basics of transcription and translation. So, transcription is our DNA to RNA, and we're focusing on the production of mRNA, which is by the enzyme RNA Paul 2. RNA Paul 2, I'll put a little 2 here, um, has helicase activity. It has five prime to three prime RNA polymerase activity. And its function is to copy one strand of DNA, which is called the template strand. to RNA. Okay. So instead of calling this antisense, we'll call this template. RNA transcripts are always made five prime to three prime. Therefore, the template strand is read three prime to five prime. The other strand that is not copied is called the coding strand. So RNA polymerase copies by base pairing and like everything we've learned it's anti-parallel 5 prime to 3 prime. The template versus the coding strand non-template can be either strand of a DNA double helix. So when we're drawing our DNA, we always draw two strands because it's a double helix. <clears throat> so you can have genes that are read from either strand. And what this diagram is trying to show you is that they're going to go in opposite directions because, again, the DNA double helix is anti-parallel. So one gene, one strand, but for all the genes together, either strand could be used. When we look at DNA, we talk about a transcriptional unit, which is going to have a promoter. A promoter is upstream of the transcription start site, which we label as plus one. So this way is upstream. This way is downstream. Okay. RNA promoter is where RNA polymerase is put on to begin transcription. Plus one is the first nucleotide. I'm just making it up as A that's transcribed. There is a termination um, signal sequence that will tell what the three prime end of the transcript is. We'll talk about this in just a second. Oops. Ugh. What the heck? Okay, and somehow I'm stuck. Okay, get to the next slide. Great. Hmm. 
Okay, here we go. What's important to know about the eukaryotic RNA polymerase promoters is the TATA box and the BRE element. So again, these are upstream of the plus one site. Okay, these are the only two we're worried about and they are important for binding transcription factors which are general or basal um, factors that work on all RNA pol 2 promoters. So there's nothing specific. They bind these consensus sequences so that they can work on all the different promoters. Let me see where I'm going. Okay, so transcription is a three-step process. Initiation, elongation, termination. That's what we're going to talk about. Initiation, we've mentioned, starts at the promoter. which is a DNA sequence. Okay. Requires the basal transcription factors to bind the promoter. Which in turn recruits RNA polymerase and RNA polymerase 2 to the transcription start site. So these proteins align in pink is your RNA polymerase. Oh my gosh. These transcription factors align the RNA polymerase right to where the plus one site is going to be so that RNA polymerase can start copying. Remember that RNA polymerase does not require a primer. It can just start copying at whatever the first nucleotide is in its catalytic site. Elongation is just the continuing addition of RNA nucleotides at the three prime end. Okay, so what I want you to see here is that RNA polymerase unwinds the DNA. It actually also rewinds the DNA. And in this little transcription bubble, it is copying the base pairs of DNA to RNA base pairs. And the only difference in your base pairing rules is that this is your DNA, ATGC, your RNA is going to be U, ACG. Right? So there's no thymine in RNA. So this just keeps on going, the RNA polymerase keeps going until it reaches well, let's put it this way. The RNA polymerase just keeps going. <laughs> Here is the RNA, um, or sorry, part of the termination. Let me just write this. Part of the termination sequence is this consensus A, A, U, A, A, A sequence that is the three prime cleavage site. So cleavage means breaking phosphodiester bond. So what happens is the RNA polymerase transcribes past this terminator site. So it keeps on going. But a protein will associate with the RNA polymerase C terminal domain, which we'll talk about in a second, and it will cleave at the cleavage site and make a three prime end for that mRNA. 
This doesn't stop the RNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase does not stop at the termination site. Instead, it keeps on going, and there is a protein called RAT1 that cleaves this RNA um, nucleic acid that keeps being transcribed from RNA polymerase. And so as RAT1 is coming up here to cleave, or like it says digest, break down the RNA, it eventually reaches the RNA polymerase 2 and knocks it off the DNA. So RNA polymerase 2 does not stop on its own at the termination site. It has to kind of be forced off of the DNA by the RAT1 enzyme. The 3' prime end of the messenger RNA is made by a cleavage reaction, and then the poly A tail will be added. So, mature mRNA means that it's been processed, means that it has a 5' prime cap, a 3' prime poly A tail, and the introns have been spliced out. So this is showing you the whole kind of process. Here you start with your DNA. We've talked about the promoter. This would be your plus one. Your poly A signal sequence, part of the terminator. Oops, I lied. Part of the terminator all down here. <clears throat> RNA polymerase goes as it's moving along the DNA, it goes right past that terminator region, but the poly A signal is important for the five prime, oh, I'm sorry, three prime cleavage. You get RNA processing, which is your five prime cap, your poly A tail, and your introns removed. And this doesn't happen like it's shown in this picture. It's not a stepwise. It's actually happening co-transcriptionally. And that's where the C-terminal domain of RNA Pol 2 comes into play. So as RNA Pol 2 is initiating transcription, capping enzyme complex comes onto the C-terminal domain and puts the 5' prime cap. This is while transcription is happening. As Introns and exons are being exposed. They're shown here in red and yellow. The splicing machinery comes in. This is your splice spliceosome. And it's going to remove the introns and splice together the exons. Again, while transcription is happening. Finally, <coughs> The RNA is going to, RNA polymerase, sorry, is going to continue transcribing, but there will be the poly A cleavage site exposed on the RNA sequence. Another set of proteins that are important for poly A tail addition and cleavage come on again to that C-terminal domain of RNA Pol 2 they cleave the RNA, they add a poly A tail. This part of the, oh I can't do that, I forgot, sorry. This part of the RNA that is still with the RNA polymerase is cleaved by RAT1. So what's really important to notice is that the reason this can happen on an mRNA transcript, the splicing, the capping, the tailing, is because of this C-terminal domain on the RNA Pol2 um, enzyme that attracts the capping complex, the splicing complex, and the poly A uh, tail complex. That mRNA once processed, we call it a mature mRNA, leaves the nucleus and heads to a ribosome for translation.
Okay. Translation, you're going to have your mRNA with a 5' prime cap, a 3' prime poly A tail, your introns have been spliced out, your exons are now put together, and what's important for translation is your start codon and your stop codon. All the RNA upstream of your start codon is called the 5' prime untranslated region. All the RNA downstream of your stop codon is called the 3' prime UTR. The mRNA sequence is read in groups of three, three nucleotides, that's a codon, and it is read by tRNA. So tRNA binds an amino acid, tRNA has an anticodon that base pairs to the mRNA codon, and that's how this is read. But this is all happening on the ribosome. So translation initiation starts at the 5' prime cap. You have these guys, which are initiation factors. which means proteins. You have a tRNA with methionine for the start codon. And in purple, you have your small ribosomal subunit. This whole complex starts at the cap and scans to find the AUG <clears throat> in the COSAC sequence context. Okay. Once it finds that AUG and the tRNA base pairs with the AUG, the initiation factors leave and the large ribosomal subunit comes on. This is just a close-up of that happening. Here's your tRNA with the methionine. It reads the start codon. Condom. Codon. The second codon is lined up in the A site, ready for the next tRNA. So, for translation elongation, this little video So, obviously I don't have any better internet in my office than I did in the classroom. Oh, maybe, maybe. Okay, here we go. Chain elongation begins with the binding of a tRNA, which recognizes the next codon in the mRNA to the A site of the ribosome. This is catalyzed by the EFTU transcription factor and requires the hydrolysis of a GTP. You don't need to know that. Once the tRNA binds in the A site of the ribosome, the polypeptide chain is moved from the tRNA in the P site to the amino acid attached to the tRNA in the A site. Okay, so here's making your new peptide bond. Remember that this is catalyzed by the ribosomal RNA. Peptidyl transferase, a protein RNA complex, 
present in the 50S ribosomal subunit catalyzes the formation of this new peptide bond between the amino acids. The ribosome then translocates to the next codon. This process is promoted by elongation factor G and requires another GTP. You don't have to know that. This places the empty tRNA molecule in the E site of the ribosome and moves the tRNA containing the growing polypeptide chain in the P site. The next codon in the mRNA chain is positioned in the A site. The uncharged or empty tRNA in the E site then leaves the ribosome and a cycle of chain elongation is completed. Through subsequent cycles of chain elongation, the polypeptide chain continues to elongate one amino acid at a time. Okay, so that is elongation. What's my chance of plain termination? Termination is going to happen at your stop codon. Okay. Close that guy. Maybe. 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 Termination begins when a stop codon appears in the A site. Since there is no tRNA corresponding to the stop codon, a release factor binds in the A site. The protein. binding of the release factor causes the polypeptide chain to be cleaved from the tRNA. The polypeptide is released and then the tRNA is released. In the last step, the two ribosomal subunits and the mRNA dissociate from each other. This completes the termination process. Okay. So...